And during a home football game, this could be one of the busiest intersections in northwest Arkansas. Now, if you add a road construction project, the results could be frustrating. That's right, Neely. This former bank will be the new prior center, including the old vault. They're actually saving it, and they plan to install studio interview space inside. We're out here at the Whitewater Park, and you can see this is the designated swimming area. That's right, you can see the cleanup. I just had to step out of the way there for a second. Uh, we were actually driving to City Hall when the storm hit. The winds just picked up and started throwing debris all through the streets. Even though Fayetteville has many more resources than other rural parts of the state, the cost to provide broadband internet is rising. Parsons actually hoped to cover this entire stadium during his lifetime. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But in May soon, the rodeo is looking for investments to do just that. It's actually pretty wet out here still. Um, just a little while ago, the players were out trying to get a little extra practice in. But they were ushered off again because of the threat of lightning. And that same threat is what shut down the Pro-Am around noon today. From investigating mock crime scenes to treating injuries in the field, the kids at Camp Rescue are spending this week learning what it takes to work in emergency services. This tournament is more than just an amenity for the people who live here. It also gives us national exposure on the Golf Channel, not to mention all the spectators who show up in person. Live in Rogers, I'm Kyle Landberger, KNWA Northwest Arkansas News. I've lived around here all my life. But after early morning flash floods. Right there, they jump trees there over to these trees right here around these rocks. Jimmy Donahue's stomping grounds are soaked. Oh, less than a mile around there is another one. Bridge, it's, it's, it's in bad shape. There's damage from Garfield to Siloam to all over Benton County. It has been a very long night. More than 50 roads shut down, and at least eight drivers who ignored the warnings learned a wet lesson. We have several motorists that have uh, been washed off of the road. If we close the road, there's a reason we're closing the road. The rain may have stopped, but the work for the Benton County Road Department has just begun. It's going to take a long time to clean up this mess. They say the debris that's washed up to this bridge could take a week alone. We've got 21 road graders out on the roads right now. They will be out as long as they need to be. We've got culverts that's totally washed out, six-foot holes in roads. We've got a disaster in northwest Arkansas. The judge has declared an emergency. The county's emergency management agency is tallying damage surveyed by road crews, and cities are doing the same. We'll be in contact with them constantly through the process as we all work together, recover, and put things back together the way they were. Donahue doesn't expect that to be anytime soon. It's probably the most that's been closed down in years. It'll take them a long time to get them all straightened back out. Water can do amazing things. I'm Kyle Lambert, KNWA Northwest Arkansas News. It's freezing out there. Yeah, and it's eight degrees, and there are a lot of people we even heard that are living in dumpsters right now. The Seven Hills Day Center gives Fayetteville's homeless a place to get out of the cold. It meets basic needs food, clothing, uh, showers, laundry, that kind of stuff. It's our main point of contact for the community of people that, that need some help. It's an incredible organization that is just really fighting homelessness and um, poverty, and they're fighting with the education and opportunities. Well, on a day like today, it's especially important to have a place like this for our clients to get out of the weather. But the old building's heater was no match for Thursday's extreme temperatures. Everybody's going in and out constantly. It's about 50 degrees inside the day center. Being homeless or living in poverty is stressful enough. These conditions just add to that. The center put out a call for help on social media. And Jennifer Flowers answered. We were just trying to find some to let us borrow. Went to Lowe's right on 6th Street, and the sweetest manager donated two wonderful kerosene heaters. Seven Hills may be a warmer place, but Flowers says a much bigger problem still needs to be solved. We have a huge community of people that don't have a place to go. When you're working and taking care of kids, and we all have our blinders, and we might see somebody standing outside of Walmart and give them a couple dollars, there's so much more that we can do. You won't find the usual suspects on the tap wall at Tanglewood Branch. So it's a simple like that? Yeah. yeah. We have people come in and they want one of the American domestics, the Coors Light, the Bud Lights, and there's nothing against them, but we don't have those here. Instead, J.T. Wampler serves up a couple of his own creations, <laughs> alongside a constantly changing collection of craft brews. We like the little guys. We have a couple of exclusive taps on the wall where they literally send enough beer to the state for us. And the rare selection is drawing quite a crowd. People come in here every day wanting to try our beer. It's a, a diverse cast of characters in here. If you hold down a bar stool long enough, 
you may even meet the father of American craft brewing. The New Albion Brewing Company was the first from the ground up without having, you know, the resources of an Anheuser-Busch Brewing Company or that sort of thing. The Navy sent Jack McAuliffe to Scotland in the 60s. Use my recipe. Where he discovered European brews far different from the normal American fare. I said to myself, when I get back home to the United States, I'm not going to be able to buy beers like this. I better learn how to make them. So that's what I did. In 1976, he built New Albion by hand. And although his beer was popular, it wasn't turning a profit. And the operation folded after six years but not before inspiring a wave of home brewers to take things to the next level. It's going everywhere, it's sort of like a virus. The interest in craft beer around here is at an all-time high. I think it's overdue. I think one Arkansas, we love local, and also we, uh, we love beer. Jesse Core started his Springdale Brewery in 2010. Yeah, that's good. With just one account, and five 20 gallon vessels. We're focused on the best tasting product we can get. The brewery expanded earlier this year to meet Arkansas's appetite. And with a steady stream of kegs going out the door, Core is growing again. Each one of these is about 700 to 750 gallons of beer. We are maxed out of capacity. So we're getting 10 more of these twice the size to go in the next building. Even with 15 production ready recipes, they're still using this pilot system they started with. Pumping out experiments, only available here in this tasting room. We have a Belgian wit, we have a Hefeweizen. You can add spices, herbs, flowers. And we're only limited by our creativity. And once they perfect the recipe, it goes into the big guy. This is what it all comes down to. 30 days from grain to glass, all the hard work, all the sweat, all the lifting. This is when you start thinking, hey man, maybe I'm living the dream in here. A dream far beyond anything Jack McAuliffe ever expected to see here in the natural state. More people are getting exposed to it. More places like this have it. More people walk in and they say, man, I never liked beer before, but this is good. It's something to celebrate. President Mike Malone of the Northwest Arkansas Council says the word is out about this region. People are moving here because we've got a great economy here. They see opportunity here. The Northwest Arkansas Council used census numbers to estimate the growth rate here in Northwest Arkansas. They say on average, Benton and Washington counties add 23 people every day. If each one of those new additions grabs a latte, it pumps $43 into the local economy. And you've got to eat, right? What's the special? The special is mayo flat. I'll take 23. 23 will come out to 205.36. That's growing our whole economy, and it's raising the economic standards here in the region across the board. If the growth continues, it will raise the population to 500,000 before the end of this summer. A half million residents. To someone who grew up here, I didn't see that day coming. Malone says reaching that mark will increase investment. Some companies and consultants that help companies find new homes for businesses only look at regions that are over a certain size, and a lot of times the cutoff is a half million. But we're already enjoying the benefits of a bigger population. There's so many more things to do now. Bigger economy, a lot more people here gives you more arts and cultural opportunities, more retail offerings, and just more job opportunities.